What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we are reviewing my car. Yes, this is my baby and it has been for the past 26 months. It has been amazing driving this car and uh, it was, well, it was on my list of cars to buy because I absolutely love my BMW 535D Touring. It is such a cool car it is such a good car as well and i have sold it it is time for something new we're moving on but i'm going to miss this car so much and because i sold it because it's leaving and because it is one of the most frequently asked questions uh, what car do you drive yourself? I decided to make a review on it and do like a, an owner's review because I have driven it for over two years So I can tell you a lot of stuff about this car and about the things I do like and don't like so that's what we're going to do today But before we start this review, I just want to show you this cool smart little device uh, Which coincidentally is also today's sponsor It is Carly hashtag ad this is such a smart little device. It is an OBD reading device, as you can see. So this is universal. Just plug it in to your car like that. And I've got an app right here. So start up the car. This is the app. Now there are four things you can do with it. You can check your car's health, check for fault codes, anything the car generates that you can't see. Customize it, unlock and code hidden features, so optional extras that are available but are not on the car, or expand the configuration available to you in the iDrive system. The used car check, just plug it in to any car you are looking at and it will generate a report and tell you if the mileage and everything is okay with the car. And you can generate live data, like engine RPM, temperatures, stuff like that. Most importantly, code hidden features this is everything you can change in your car there are loads of menus and loads of changes you can make i for instance have added the digital speedo in my dashboard which wasn't there which i always thought was weird the configurability of my sport mode and the sport displays and one important thing is the start stop system so you can see that this is off i have coded that to always be off that's the kind of thing you can do with this car. You can add functions to your car or you can configure them in a way that is not possible in your own car. So if you're interested, if you want one of these Carly's, you can check out the link in the top comment or the description. And with that, let's go check out my car. Okay, so I'll do a lap around the car, show you the spec I've got it in, and then uh, we'll do the interior and take it for a drive towards the Autobahn. Uh, so, my car is carbon black. Uh, this is one of my favorite BMW colors because it is a super deep dark blue. Uh, when it's night, it is, well, almost pitch black, but when you park it underneath uh, like a street light it you can see this hint of blue in there it is such a good color one of my favorites and uh, well I'm super happy that this was the spec I got of course two years ago uh, you know we, we just wanted a 535d and we bought it at a dealership we were familiar with uh, so we didn't really choose the spec this was just the one that was available to us uh, I also changed the uh, grill the kidneys so immediately put these black ones in because I really like that on these F11s uh, I've got an M Sport package so you can see that this is the M Sport bumper with the more aggressive styling and the fog lights in there as well uh, I think this is a really really good front end I still think this is one of the most beautiful two rings ever made I, I really really like it I think it's very sporty it's quite imposing sometimes uh, but it's not like over the edge it's not it's still a little bit elegant i think uh, beautiful headlights with the angel eyes of course which are disappearing now in bmws which is a shame the 19 inch m double spoke wheels with michelin pilot sport four tires really really good tire 245 40 uh, zr19 all around so 19 inch wheels with 
quite a nice tire on there. I just love these tires, they are so good. Uh, shadow line package, so everything is black, including the roof rails. Keyless go, keyless entry. Oh, there's a fly in there. Please get out of my car. Thank you. Nope. Oh, that's going to be annoying later on. Okay, uh, so keyless entry. Um, at the rear, we've got the double exhaust for the 35D. Of course, the split window, which I really love with this electrically retracting cover, uh, which more modern cars after this still didn't have. So I always thought that was super cool. You close it and it goes down automatically. Uh, boot size is really nice. One of the reasons, of course, why we chose this car, because it's so practical and still you have even some more stuff to, or some more storage, really. Those are the original kidneys back there. Um, but as you can see, there's no room for a spare wheel there. So that is because this car originally came on run flat tires. So you don't need a spare wheel. Well, you do when you change the wheels or the tires to regular ones because the run flats are way too uncomfortable. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I went for these Pilot Sport 4 tires. They are quite new actually. They've been on there for like three months. Um, but they are so much more comfortable than the standard run flat tires, which has this really hard, thick uh, edge inside, so you can drive when you have a flat tire. So yeah, if you get a flat tire with this one, you have to call roadside assistance. Um, what else, what else, what else? Well, of course, it has done 190,000 kilometers, so it does have some things here and there, little, damages little scratches and this this one is really ugly i think this is someone with like a bike handle that tapped it or something but yeah it it has had quite a hard life we've used it well this car and it has been like our commercial van as well and we've went very fast on the autobahn and it's just it's, it's had a hard life um rear space I always thought it could have been better. It's a bit disappointing when you look at the size of the car, how much, how much space there is in the back. But of course you do have a really big boot and uh, you can see that my seat is quite far back, of course. Oh, that was the fly again. Where is it? Don't know. Okay, moving on engine so being a 535d uh, this is the three liter inline six twin turbo diesel engine with 313 horsepower and 630 newton meters stock this one has an ec remap a stage one tune uh, so it delivers 363 horsepower and 716 newton meters of torque which is really really nice uh, this is the n57 d30 t1 engine uh, built from this car from 2010 to 2017 but it got an update already after the first year so the first ones the first 35 d's have 300 horsepower uh, and from 2011 they have 313 so mine is from 2012 so it has 313 stock um, now let's talk about some of the things I really really wanted in my car let's talk about the most important thing I think this these are the comfort seats they are optional and everyone who's ever ordered a BMW or is ever going to order one should go for these seats if they can because they are one of the best out there they they are so comfortable. The seating position is spot on. Uh, you can have them, you can set them, uh, you can configure them in so many ways. Uh, you can make it like a sports seat. These bolsters are adjustable and you can really make them tight around your body. You have this extendable part for your legs, for your upper legs, which is really cool. You can see how far they extend. It's really nice to have that underneath your uh, thighs on longer trips. The headrests are electrically adjustable and you can adjust the 
headrests as well. It's just the best. The best. Absolutely love those seats. Now, another thing we have as an option is of course the panoramic roof. Go, be free. No, uh, keeps coming in. I think it's gone. Um, so this is really nice. It's a, quite a big roof. You can see that and you can open it of course like that. But the problem is um, this car having an all black interior and this being quite a big roof, it gets really, really hot in here in summer. It's like insane. It's like a sauna and it's just not a very good combination to have that black leather with that roof because it's just unbearable. And I don't have ventilated seats, so that would be a lot better. Uh, so in the future, when I'm looking at cars or if I go for a black interior, I always want ventilated seats. It's just better. It's just impossible. So uh, the inlay, not the biggest fan of that. They still have that in modern BMWs in a different iteration, but I really, I don't think this is anything special. I would have chosen something else if I had the opportunity. But again, I just wanted the 35D, didn't really care what it looked like, just wanted one. Uh, so M Sport steering wheel, of course, and flappy pedals, ZF 8 speed. And I guess that's it for the spec of my car. Okay, so let's take it for a drive towards the Autobahn to see why we are going to miss this car so much. Because that is what this car is built for, the Autobahn. I'm going to open that for some more light in here. Start stop. Not on, great. Got my digital speedo right there. Let's go for the sport this place as well. Man, all the things I've added to this car, it's incredible. Okay, so driving the car. So one thing I have to tell everyone who is interested in this car, thinking about buying one, uh, you could get it with an M Sport package. Now, there were two different things with that M Sport package. The exterior and the, the chassis, the suspension, basically. This has passive M Sport dampers. Um, so they are, you can hear it already on those little bumps. It is quite stiff. It's also lower than a standard 5 Series, so it does look a little bit better. And it does handle quite well for such, I mean, something like 1,850 kilos station wagon it goes like hell um, around corners but it is quite firm and i would recommend anyone to go for the adaptive dampers which were also available on this car and you could get an m sport exterior package but go for the adaptive damper so you would have best of both worlds um, that's yeah it's quite tough to, to drive this car with this suspension, especially, as I said, with those run flat tires. That combination was not a great one. And of course, because you have that big sunroof, the panoramic roof, you also lose a lot of rigidity uh, that way. So you can sometimes hear like the roof flexing and yeah, it's, it's not the best combination for uh, comfort. Of course, it does mean that it goes round corners pretty nicely, and that is nice too, but I just don't go for the M Sport suspension because you will, it, you will get annoyed with it at some point. So stock, this car does 5.5 seconds to 100 and has a top speed of 250 kilometers an hour, um, but this car is not stock, and we actually had it on the dyno. So those numbers I told you earlier, 363 horsepower and 716 newton meters are actually dyno verified. That's the real power number. And that means that this car is so well suited for the Autobahn because it is seriously quick. So we'll put the gearbox in Sport, the car in Sport Plus, and activate Sport displays. So full throttle. And this is why we bought this car, because we drive quite a lot on the Autobahn every year. And of course the Sport displays, they don't generate the right amount of horsepower because this is tuned. 
but because we drive so much in Germany, this is why we bought this car. I can reminisce with you guys all day about some trips Martijn and I had, uh, one in particular to Berlin when we went to the Formula E. I had to pick up Martijn at the airport in Eindhoven because he came from Monaco from the F1 race and uh, we had to drive through the night to Berlin uh, like something like 700 kilometers and it was just such a pleasure with this car because you could just ram it down the autobahn and I don't know how long it took but it was I think it was a record but just the effortless performance you get with this engine and especially with a tuned version of this engine is just so nice and it it feels like a petrol v8 like the amount of torque this car has this engine has it feels like you know a modern m50i something like that and i think that's the only way you really can compete with those big petrol engines is to have like a twin turbo diesel engine it's so nice and this is such a peach of an engine it's comfortable when you want it that's also down to this great gearbox the zf8 speed but it's quiet it's comfortable but it's also powerful and aggressive when you want it and that's just such a nice combination Now, of course, because I'm selling it, let's talk about numbers. Let's talk about what it costs me to run this car. Because, as you know, cars are expensive. And since we put like almost 90,000 kilometers on this car in the last two years, of course, there have been some invoices and costs that went with that as well. So we bought this car uh, a little over two years ago for 33,000 euros, something around that. Uh, and we just sold it for 15. So depreciation is 18,000 euros, which is 692 euros per month, which is, oh, that's, a, that's a bitter pill to take. Uh, insurance, 172 euros a month. Road tax, 175. Maintenance, 309 euros per month over the last two years. And fuel consumption. Now, you have to take into consideration that we ram this car down the Autobahn quite often. We meet you guys over here when you bring us your cars. We have to go to south of Germany to visit tuners. Uh, we went to Switzerland, we went to Austria. I don't know, I take it on my holiday, of course. Uh, so. We averaged over the last two years around 7.7 .7 liters per 100 kilometers, which is roughly 37 miles to the gallon, which I think is not bad at all. I think that's actually quite respectable. And over the last two years with 90,000 kilometers, that comes down to 295 euros per month. So yeah, those are the numbers. It's quite a lot actually. I have to say that it is more than I thought when we bought the car, uh, but it has been worth it. I mean, I've enjoyed every, every kilometer in this car, every minute. It has served us so well. It never really made a peep. It never said, no, this is too much for me, or it, it just took the beating and went with it. It was just really, really impressive. The reliability has been great as well. Of course, we've had, you know, the usual stuff, uh, brake discs, tires, filters, oil, stuff like that, but nothing major really. And I think that's really impressive considering this car has been tuned for quite a long time as well. So a little over two years it has been. I've driven this car or we've driven this car for 3,300 kilometers a month on average. And that has cost us 1,643 euros all in with everything. That includes maintenance, road tax, insurance, fuel, everything. And well, that might be some good consumer advice for you guys. Of course, something new is coming and I just, I'm, I'm going to miss this car, I really am. Because this car also embodies the big change we made. I mean, we went from a Jaguar X-Type diesel with a manual gearbox and, and like 150 or 60,000 kilometers 
to this. And it also represented the change for our channel, going from like basically a hobby to full time and trying to make this our job. And this car was there with us. Uh, and so it's also, so it's always going to have a special place in my heart. I hope you guys like it too. And of course we are going to make a video when we pick up my new car. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button right there. You can also check out this video or go check out this playlist. See you at the next one. Bye.